Breaking news. LGBTQ plus representative Carlos Guillermo Smith, the champion of the fight on Don't Say Gay, has been gerrymandered by Governor Ron DeSantis to lose re-election. There is an old phrase in Florida Southern politics, what goes around comes around. And Florida has just two LGBTQ plus state representatives, Carlos Guillermo Smith, the state's first Latino LGBTQ plus to serve, and Michelle Rayner Goolsby, Florida's first lesbian and black queer woman to serve. In the Florida Senate, there is Chevron Jones, the first gay black state senator, and they are the entire LGBTQ plus legislative caucus in Tallahassee. Most notably this year, they were the front lines against Ron DeSantis and the radical GOP majority in the state legislature over don't say gay, racist legislation, woke issues, trans health care issues, and even book bans. So what comes around for the LGBTQ plus community for Guillermo Smith and his two colleagues is overwhelming gratitude and respect. A recent poll showed overwhelming positive job performance ratings compared to just 20% favorability for most Florida politicians. That's the good news. This weekend at the Florida LGBTQ plus Democratic Caucus, we also learned that the better you may do when it comes to those in power, the more dangerous a position you are in. What is he going to do next? Today, he's passing legislation to eliminate black majority districts and to punish Disney for speaking out against him. Who is next on the hit list for Governor Ron DeSantis if they don't get in line and support his extreme right wing agenda? Now, the DeSantis map is set for final passage in that room back there sometime tomorrow. It will increase Republican seats and likely reduce the number of seats that are currently held by black Democrats in the state of Florida and inevitably end up in court. Democrats have said that it is blatantly unconstitutional. Now, we did reach out to the governor's office for comment. They said that he appreciates the legislature addressing his priorities. As far as his political future goes, Kate, we were told, quote, Speculation about his supposed aspiration beyond Florida is unfounded. Until it's not. That's how it always goes, though. <laughs> Diane, thank, and you, thank very you very much. much. Well, after Guillermo Smith did this interview with CNN, we found out who was next. It was him. In an exclusive interview with Queer News Tonight at the Florida LGBTQ plus Democratic Caucus, Guillermo Smith explains how much the Florida GOP and its leadership is spending now to defeat him. He suggests the DeSantis-drawn new election map has moved the district out of exclusively Orlando Orange County and into Republican conservative Seminole County. The DeSantis gerrymandering has changed his new district dramatically. In 2020, Guillermo Smith won the seat by a jaw-dropping 24 points. Experts now suggest that the new district changes made Guillermo Smith's district a statistical toss-up, and one of the potential major upsets of the midterm elections. The three-time LGBTQ plus state representative is now in the fight of his life, and Guillermo Smith suggests, quote, we are at best a 51% to 49% result, end quote, with a first-time Republican candidate, Susan Pal uh, Palazencia, I mispronounced, sorry. As example, she received the endorsement of major Don't Say Gay Bill supporter and Florida House Speaker designate Paul Renner. Then promptly came a $25,000 check from the Florida House Republican Campaign Committee, which Renner chaired. I wanna, before, we, uh, before we end uh, here at the Florida LGBTQ Democratic Caucus, I want to talk about you personally. So, uh, I would imagine that uh, I would imagine very much of the LGBTQ community would say, as I make the joke about the gang of three, uh, <laughs> we're all very envious of the relationship between the three of you in the Florida legislature. Uh, your voice through the legislative session for the LGBTQ community and uh, against Don't Say Gay uh, means that you are arguably one of the most powerful voices in America against this because Don't Say Gay is being exported now everywhere. 
The tangible consequence of that is you've probably appeared on some hit lists of That's right. places that don't like uh, Carlos Guillermo Smith, and we want to get rid of him. Tell us about what might be going on in your room. I'm glad you asked about that, Al, because as one of the three openly LGBT members of the Florida legislature, who's been a leading voice against Don't Say Gay, that has also made me a political target. Ron DeSantis and the GOP machine in Florida would like nothing more than to unseat me and to send a message not only that they're going to go after the LGBTQ community itself, but they're going to throw all of their resources to try to get rid of one of the leading LGBTQ voices that is speaking out against their agenda. I'm feeling that very much right now. I was gerrymandered into a brand new district in Central Florida that combines both Orange and Seminole County that is now considered a toss-up in this November re-election that Wait, I'm running you for. Are a toss at risk up. of losing your seat. I'm in a toss-up race where I very strongly believe that the outcome of this race will be 51% versus 49% with me That's winning every single now. bit of that 51%. Yeah. So they're going to be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars against me with false attacks, with negative attacks from calling me a groomer to calling me a socialist to lying about my record over and over as they have repeatedly done over the years in an attempt to unseat me. And I can tell you right now, I'm not going anywhere. We are fighting very hard, and we will defend this seat, and we will come back even stronger in November. I, I hear the um, the resolute uh, of your voice. I'm just curious when when you have voiced for LGBTQ community and and youth and students and and so many of the equality issues that you've done, and then this is the result of what you're going to face in uh, November. Beyond LGBT, is it personally disappointing to you? Do, do you just go, oh, I just, I don't know how I can do this. <laughs> well, tomorrow on Queer News Tonight, the state representative is going to answer that critical question. But clearly, the defeat of Carlos Guillermo Smith is presidential candidate Ron DeSantis's ultimate don't say gay or else. It's terrible what they're doing. The gerrymandering has happened in all districts. We're seeing it in Miami Beach. We've inherited, fortunately, one of the few gay out senators, Chevron Jones, but the way they've drawn him into us splits our little city in half and puts us with Miami Gardens way out in the West. So it's clear they wanted to tie in the liberal Miami Beach Democrats with the black Democrats in Miami Gardens to clump us all together. So we're seeing this horrible thing happening everywhere. Uh, and also, you know, we don't see, I think, our community coming out enough about how important this election is in supporting candidates. That, I think that that's the number one issue. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. You know, we don't, you know, we look out there and see uh, the fundraising and the events and, and just the awareness of what's happening. And I feel like our community is sleeping. And I think it's really crucial, you know, the stories you're telling and the coverage we had at, for Queer News of the entire caucus. I think it was great coverage, but I also think people need to pay attention and we need mm -hmm. to get the word out. And that's really the, the, the focus for the mm -hmm. election. Voter, voting matters. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say he, that DeSantis doesn't limit his, his bullying to schools. Uh, it just sort of spreads it all around. I mean, he really truly is. And that picture of him with his arms folded, very, very Trumpy. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's get out you the know, vote for our yeah. rep in Orlando. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, and Seminole County. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's not just Orlando and, and Orange County. You know, uh, to the point that you just made, Greg, um, last night we led Queer News Tonight on Will Larkins. And I interviewed Will Larkins over the weekend. He is the, the very uh, famous uh, high school student mm -hmm. as a junior, leads Winter Park High School, and 500 students walk out of the school chanting, We Say Gay. Mm -hmm. And it really mm -hmm sparked a moment uh, with schools all over Florida. And he talks about how um, it was like throwing a match into um, uh, match box, a, a matchbox, yeah. he said, um, of the effect that that has. And now he expresses, going into a senior at Winter Park High School, that he is fearful about school starting on August 10th. And the reason he's fearful is not because of bullying in school, 
uh, from other students because he says it's actually improved. Mm. Don't Say Gay has united mm. many, many students. So he s expresses not fear from the bullying from students, but he, ex he ex uh, has fear for August 10th start of the school year because of Ron DeSantis and the GOP and the effect that it will have on Orange County schools and his school. And the only thing, all you have to do to look at what's going on to prove that is you can't have a sticker mm -hmm. that says safe space in Orange County schools mm -hmm. on August 10th. You can't have anything that reflects LGBT or rainbow in Orange County schools or Winter Park High School on August 10th. And you can't even have a picture on your desk that shows your loving partner if it's same sex. And that's what Will Larkin says is the bullying that he's fearful of. That's in, intuitive and instructional from the, I, uh, forgive me for using the word fascist, but from the fascist governor who is a presidential candidate of the United States. At the other end of the spectrum, Will Larkins, as a student leader, one of the LGBT leaders fighting against Don't Say Gay in the Florida House, is targeted this way. And a lot of people would say, this is not a big deal. It's just the way elections go and, and just roll with the punches. If he's good enough, he'll win. If he's not, he won't. That's not true. He was in a district. He's a three-time mm -hmm. uh, state house representative. His last election was his biggest election. He won by 24 points. Somebody, Governor Ron DeSantis, went in and rewrote the map, very structured and strategic, to change 24-point win to a 50-50 mm -hmm. chance. That is the quintessential definition of gerrymandering. So how do we get that youthful energy, that excitement transferred to the rest of the community, to the, old, the elders of the community? I, I'm going to turn to you, um, the, the, the organizer. You're the voice behind, behind the National Task Force Dinner that's going to be in South Florida. And not to say you're going to save us. But save us. Save Tell us how you're something. going to save us. Right. Do something. Well, I, I do think that, especially here in Florida, that, you know, we look at, you know, DeSantis and people just get tired and think we have no chance. And, and, the, and the reality is, is that, um, you know, DeSantis won by, what was it, 40? 32,000 votes. 32,000 votes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those votes that were missing were from the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. So we can saying it over and over and over again. The margins are not as wide of a, of a, as the legislature and the, and, and the governor uh, has shown. Mm -hmm. We have the voters. It's just exciting them to come out. And I think that Don't Say Gay, I hope it has motivated people. But I do, I do still really, truly believe that people are not paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have two candidates that are hopefully going to the state house. We have Todd Delmay and we have Janelle Perez. Um, that can are LGBTQ voices that we need in the legislature. We need more voices there that can speak our language and speak to our community. Mm -hmm. And and while there are candidates out there, that of course, allies are very important. Having our own voices represented is the most important. Yeah, and I point out Todd Del May, um, uh, the president of my Hollywood Pride, <laughs> and uh, you should look at uh, at Todd. And and Michael, I want to I want to piggyback before we move out of this story to to Greg's question. Uh, the advocacy here from the National Task Force Dinner, now from your seat, a uh, longtime city commissioner at Miami Beach, running for mayor at Miami Beach, very specifically, not broad community, but very specifically LGBT. What is it that we do in the next four months to motivate the LGBTQ community to get out and and make a difference? Well, the show is helping. We have to educate voters. They have to understand the importance of this election. Like Jeff was saying, too many LGBT voters stay home. It's easier to get them to go to a fundraiser for the task force or a smart ride or other things that more have a fun component, and they don't realize the importance of elections. It's really been a challenge since I first got elected 16 years ago to mobilize our community and come out to vote. And we do a better job of it down here in South Florida and Miami-Dade and Broward County. But once you get past Orlando, the northern part of the state is, is not good. We see the numbers and we have to do a better job as well of moving up the state and getting allies or openly gay candidates elected north of Orlando that are going to bring it home. Because right now, 
uh, I think he's going to get reelected. I think he's doing a good job and I hope he's reelected. But we're still such a small minority in the state house and the state Senate, that you can get so little done as a Democrat, as a state elected official. It's embarrassing. You can hardly get your bills argued on the floor. So that needs to change as well. We have to push and we have to get more Democrats elected. I bet you if we were to say that the bars are going to close at 1030 every evening, unless they vote, they would all show up. <laughs> because that's what they care about. You right, can't get right. them to focus on any real issues of mm. substance. Like mm. Most of the younger mm. ones say, it doesn't affect me because I'm not in school anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it doesn't matter who wins because it doesn't affect me, yeah. but it does. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Well, it one, does. one final thought uh, that I'd like to make before we move on to our next story. Um, this is not just affecting those living in Orlando, Orange County and mm. Seminole County in his mm. district. Uh, his voice, Michelle Rayner, Goolsby's voice, Chevron Jones, Todd Del May, other candidates, Michael Gangoro uh, running for Miami Beach mayor. And the specific example of Guillermo Smith, um, he has risked everything, everything to come out on this limb mm -hmm. for our community. Mm -hmm. uh, our LGBT candidates do that, even in very blue liberal Miami Beach. Uh, when Gangora <laughs> supports LGBTQ community, when Del May supports LGBTQ community, when city commissioners in Wilton Manors come out and support LGBTQ community, they're risking everything still today. It's improved, but they're still risking everything. And Guillermo Smith as a story proves that. 24 points to toss up in two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? It happened because the of the power of Ron DeSantis mm -hmm. as governor. And for me, one of the things that I think comes out of this story for him as an illustration, and then really all LGBT candidates that that get the gumption to represent us, we have an obligation to stand up for them, mm -hmm. which means we volunteer, we help, we register, we vote, but most importantly, we volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in Broward County can help this candidate. That is not a candidate that's going to represent me, but he represents me mm -hmm. because he stood up for all of the students against Don't Say Gay. Mm -hmm. We didn't win that fight, but we need Guillermo Smiths to help be in that fight. And if you think in Miami-Dade County he doesn't affect you, you are making a terrible mistake. And we have an obligation to stand up and help now. It is a call to arms. This election, in my opinion, is a call to arms. Absolutely. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.